my view, we've already waited too long to deal with this climate crisis. The scientists tell us that this is the decisive decade. The existential threat to humanity is climate change. U.S. President Joe Biden has made action on climate change a priority for his administration. To cut a greenhouse gases in half, in half by the end of this decade. But his ambitious clean energy agenda is now being held hostage in a deadlocked Senate by a single senator from his own party. I'm Joe Manchin. I was born and raised in Farmington, West Virginia. And this is what I'm fighting for. Joe Manchin is fiercely protective of, of the interests in his own state. And in West Virginia is a coal mining state. Coal mining remains a major industry in West Virginia. And Senator Joe Manchin ran a coal broking firm before he became the state governor and then senator. There's a wide agreement that we need to address climate change, but less agreement on how, how fast and, was, and at what cost. Joe Manchin wants to protect the carbon industry in his state. And he's very forthright about that. He doesn't even think that's an, an insult. He owns it. He talks about it. He campaigns on it. This is how he convinces his voters in his home state that he is actually an acceptable Democrat, that he's not selling them out for an agenda that they perceive to be overly green. I'll take on Washington. It's not the first time the Maverick senator has challenged the plans of a Democratic president. In 2010, he publicly opposed plans to cap and trade carbon emissions during the Obama administration. And I'll take dead aim at the cap and trade bill because it's bad for West Virginia. Now, Joe Manchin's already killed off a major plank of President Biden's climate agenda. A carrot and stick measure called the Clean Energy Performance Program, which was meant to encourage American energy producers to move to renewables. But here's the deal. That is only one of well over well over a trillion dollars worth of expenditures for climate change. Some progressives remain optimistic about the president's ability to fulfill his climate agenda. One of the ways that we still can get there is to the through the clean energy tax incentives, right? And so those are incentives um, to produce for investors to make investments in producing more energy from clean energy, from solar and wind. Also incentives for electric vehicle manufacturing and purchasing um, for consumers. Dr. Frances Colon was part of Biden's transition team and she's a former deputy advisor on science and technology at the State Department under Hillary Clinton and John Kerry. She remains optimistic about the president's climate credentials. I think that Biden goes into Glasgow uh, with a position of having brought the United States back of making all the right moves. Everybody understands that uh, politics in the United States is, is, is not easy. And I think what it shows that we are still negotiating, that the Biden administration is willing to go back to the drawing table to, to in, put together a package that can actually pass and, and do this work for the American people. Mr. President, you're going to get a deal before your trip. Best case, he arrives with three quarters of a loaf a cop. Worst case is he arrives with nothing. Now, this is just a broader question for the negotiations is, if it looks like he has the frameworks of a deal, can he go to foreign leaders? Can he go to cop and say, we're awfully close, we're gonna get this done? Seems like he's a ways away from that. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.